Sassic Rolls, Milkshakes, Fancy Spot, Coke. With two bags filled with a variety of homemade pastries and drinks, Sedem walks down the halls of the University of Ghana, calling out names of big products he has ready for sale. Meat pies, spring rolls, pancakes, samosa, the fragrance of fresh pastry dishes fill the air and I cannot help but be filled with a sense of eagerness to hear the story of how this started and how the journey has been for the hands that mold and offer these students such some snacks. Sedem starts by telling me about the death of his father and how the incidents all but brought his life to a halt. But in his own words, the demise of my dad was a trigger. It was then I decided to go all out. It all began, um, I think, two, two days after my birthday. That's when my dad died. And I think he said he was going to give me my birthday gift. So he gave me some amount of money. So, I mean, when he died, I said, no, this money must be to his honor. So all money was pumped into the business. In life, when these things happen, you better see a bigger picture. If you don't have that mindset of always seeing a bigger picture in the loss, that's where you always be at a disadvantage. But if you see the bigger picture, you jump into it and you move. I am intrigued by his determination to think a young man would dare to dream so courageously. It seems almost as though he had always wanted this one life of mixing flour and butter and the thrill of serving mouth watching big meals. But life has an interesting way of playing out the aspirations of a child, compelling them to rethink future paths and ambitions. Doris, Sedem's mother, talks about her son growing up. He loved cooking, so from the infancy. When I saw the potential in my son, then I saw, wow, I have to assist this boy. Then I said, okay, here is just a, a cup full of flour. The ovens are there. What if you can start something? For a master's degree holder, you would think his satisfaction would ultimately lie in a career befitting the status quo. But Sedem remains unmoved. He recounts a frequent encounter where people have looked down on him simply for being the guy down the hall. Over time, you realize that people who purchase your product more are people who, for once, were that rude to you and you were that nice to them. After a while, when they get to know who you are, they go like, oh, we are sorry for you, you are bad. But like, I have to smile because I want to build a relationship with them. But of course, Sedem has won for himself students on campus who will do anything to see him thrive in his small business. I observe his interaction with some customers and I'm amazed at such beautiful friendship he's built with them. Edwin and Eric have been buying Sedem's pastries since they enrolled in a university. I met Sedem, we popularly call him Range, when I was in way back in level 100. I mean 300 now. I think I bought one of his products and I really enjoyed it. So since then, mostly I buy his products in the morning, I take it as breakfast. He usually comes around 7.30. You hear him like advertising his products, sausage rolls, spring rolls and stuff. As soon as you hear him, they give him your order. Then he brings it and you pay him. If you can't pay that day, you can pay later. I just want to say thank you for all he has done for us. I met Sedem way back in level 200 and he always comes around selling pastries and drinks. You get it? Sedem is actually a nice person, like he's sociable and all. And he's very interesting, he's funny actually. That's how I think he got more people to like him. He's good, Sedem is good. He can't give up, yeah, because he's too nice and he's a hardworking guy. Safa could not hide her joy speaking about him. He really relates well with us, like in general. I'm not thinking just me. He's nice, he's friendly. Like even when I'm not buying, he always makes it a point to like say hi to me and all of that. So honestly, I think based on just his charisma, he would really take his business far. Even if it's not going well right now, there would be a breakthrough soon, so he should just keep doing it. 
Not only is he good friends with the students but also a great companion to Madame Vivian, a beauty therapist at the university. Saddam is such a wonderful guy. He's funny, he's interesting. So I was like, well, that's great. But for a guy, he said, yeah, it's, it's tough, but I love it. So I was here one day and he was just passing. I said, hi, Saddam. Why are you going? You're so, such in a hurry. He said, um, I have an exams. I said, really? Are you in uni? <laughs> are you schooling? He said, yes. We said, wow. That is very, very innovative. I mean, that's encouraging. Selim is in no way oblivious of the gift and power of human interaction. He tells me it is such a vital part of him and he would not do without it. One lesson I've learned is it's not just about money. It's about relationship. Becoming successful or becoming an upscale person, it's not just about money, but it's about relationships. So what relationships are we building? So always, I'm relating with people that I need. So like here on campus, even though most of them are that young, I need them because if they don't buy my stuff, I won't eat. So I need to respect them for who they are. The journey hasn't always been this smooth, however. I grew an intense admiration for him as he opens up about his greatest challenge of starting this business and how he overcame the obstacles. People who do this business uh, assume that they haven't gone to school and um, they have nothing to do with their lives. So when people got to know that, oh, this guy's a game pal, they go like, I mean, they go like, oh, we are sorry, we didn't know. I mean, one time there was this level 100 girl, you know, she said she wanted to buy pie and um, even, I was even on phone, then she shouted, Hey guy, I'm buying a pie. Can you hear me? And I feel like, really? I mean, I didn't lose my cool, but I think, let, let me say I lose my cool a little bit. I, I turn back and look at her and say, hey, really? Later when she, go, she got to know her friend who was doing law, who was also in Gimpa, who knows I was in Gimpa with her. When she saw me, she said, oh, I'm sorry for that time for talking to you. With us. Oh, it's fine, it's fine. When I started this business, I wanted to now move to a bigger market because I was just doing for family members and area people were like oh it's nice and good like I was like no so I, I, I need to do something substantial so then I moved to Pentier and the first two weeks I moved like the reception was good but then the food vendors and security members were like hey who is this guy who's trying to take markets like then there was back and forth like hey be careful, be careful, we'll seize your stuff. And like, I mean, they did seize my stuff. They stopped it for like a week. And I went back to the and listen, I'm not what you guys are thinking. I am a guy who is on a mission. I want to do something with my life. In all of this, what strikes me as outstanding is his passion and faith in what he does. Selim is convinced if there's one thing he has done so well without regret, it is choosing to take this vocational path and finally come into terms with the wealth of his skills and the reward that lies in putting to good use one's own gift. I've been baking all my life. My life has been baking. I, I love I love I love seeing fire, I love seeing oil, I love seeing sugar, mixing sugar and oil, doing something. Yeah. So all my life I've been in my mother's kitchen trying to do my own things. My love for baking is when I see the brownish pie, as in from, from the whitish to the brownish. And when I see my sausage rolls and I see the spring roll frying the oil, it's becoming shh. I never thought I'm that um, quiet person. I never thought I could be that funny, crazy person. Yeah, so this business has, has taught me a lot how to love people irrespective of their race. Unlike Saddam, who has been able to fully utilize the skills of baking and creating a sustainable source of income, the same cannot be said of thousands of graduates who are actively seeking job opportunities. Experts have over the years advised the revision of the country's educational curricula, suggesting the introduction of skills development as part of the courses of study. This they believe will churn out a generation of formerly educated persons 
who can also survive outside the confines of a corporate environment, just like Saddam. What remains the future of a nation tragically limited by the lack of respect for vocational and technical training? Saddam has a bachelor's degree in nutrition and a master's in social science. He could be working with the Food and Drugs Authority or consulting as a nutritionist expert. Instead, Saddam made a choice to be out of the office, a choice to be self-employed, a choice to work with flour, a choice he made with his mind and had to use his hands and not be dependent on a white collar job. A choice very rare in our times. As Confucius said, choose a job you love and you will never have to work a day in your life. There is no doubt Saddam has found the key to living a life of service and fulfillment.